Now let's uh, turn our attention to um, to drugs and drugs and consciousness. And remember, we talked a little bit about uh, different states of consciousness being induced um, by spontaneously versus uh, physiologically. Um, and and drugs themselves fit in that physio category. They they impact the body and create these uh, altered states of consciousness as a result of physiological um, physiological impact. Two or three key uh, terms to keep in mind. First of all, tolerance. Um, essentially, there are some drugs on the market uh, and black market, whichever you prefer, uh, alcohol um, and prescription painkillers, uh, which are, are uh, opiates that oftentimes uh, display this pattern of tolerance. And what that means is uh, once you take the first exposure um, and go with the, the first exposure, you get uh, a particular effect. And let's just say that that effect is, uh, we'll just call it X, okay? And that's in our diagram, that's what we're talking about here is this is the X effect. Um, <clears throat> once the person takes this medication, and most of the time doctors are highly sensitive to this aspect, is that essentially this is, this is the first exposure right here. And um, it gains its effect because the person doesn't have it in their system at all. And, um, so first exposure, we have effect of X. Um, after a while, what begins to happen um, is that uh, with repeated exposure, repeated exposure, the X effect, if you will, the first effect, begins to decrease and the person doesn't get the desired, uh, let's just say, pain relief, all right? And because of that, then, essentially, uh, the X effects decrease, the desired pain relief does not occur. And what has to happen now is the next time around, they have to uh, double it, if you will. And, and that gets the desired, desired effect again. Um, when that happens, then the body acclimates to having this substance in it, <clears throat> and now the next uh, next time after a, a repeated usage, is that that effect begins to diminish, and the person has the pain returns. What do they do next? In order to get the desired effect, then they go three times that amount, if you will. Now, this is all hypothetical, um, but essentially the key is, is once first exposure occurs and the desired effect occurs, then repeated exposure thereafter means that uh, uh, this amount has to go higher and higher in dosage in order to get the same effect, the same effect, which is, which is the X effect, is what I'm referring to here. So repeated exposure. And ultimately, over time, um, these curves continue um, up higher and higher doses to get the same effect. And that's what we're referring to as tolerance. So the second item um, is the item of dependence. And dependence uh, really is known by uh, the body's um, acclimation, if you will, uh, to uh, the um, to the substance in it. And so, one of the things that indicates dependence is a withdrawal syndrome, which sometimes is uh, a headache. Um, for example, if you're a heavy coffee drinker and you decide to um, uh, stop drinking coffee, you might see a headache and get cranky 
because you're going through withdrawal from caffeine. So we have the physical uh, dependence and a, and a physical withdrawal, uh, pain, uh, sometimes flu-like symptoms. In heroin, a lot of times you, you see flu-like symptoms um, that are part of, uh, of the withdrawal. Uh, it is so painful in some cases that the person can alleviate that by taking the drug again. So the withdrawal syndrome, and that's part of, of physical dependence. So we have physical dependence where the body actually acclimates to the drug itself. And uh, we also have psychological dependence that uh, oftentimes falls in the category of kind of malaise uh, and, and um, uh, cravings and things of that sort. Psych dependence it can, be, can occur without physical dependence. A good example of this is uh, marijuana. It creates a psychological dependence in spite of the fact that if you withdraw from marijuana, uh, you will not have a, a um, you will not have a withdrawal. And that suggests the fact that in the system itself, it doesn't create a physical dependence, but it does create a psychological dependence. And I'll put dependence down here so you can remember. And those are three, uh, well, tolerance, dependence, and then the last one, really, um, and I'll just create a little box down here to highlight it, is addiction itself. And, and addiction uh, is used pretty loosely today. Um, and addiction itself often falls in this category where the person uh, uses and abuses whatever the, the, the substance is, um, uses, abuses, um, and ignores the consequences. Essentially, they don't care what the consequences are. So somebody who gets a DUI um, continues to drink, for example. And that, that is part of what we refer to as some, someone who's in an addictive state or an addict. So three key terms, tolerance, dependence and addiction. Uh, the other thing I would add, just as a side note, which isn't necessarily in your book, is that we actually have substance addictions and then we have something called process addictions. And uh, substance is self-explanatory, um, but we also have process addictions, which something like codependency um, uh, uh, falls into that category because it's more of a relationship-based type of an ad addiction, and that's a further kind of distinction uh, when we're talking about um, uh, addiction itself in the context of drugs. Um, interestingly enough, even with drugs, you'll have not only physio, but you'll also have psychological aspects to it that uh, complicate the picture um, when we're trying to actually treat it and help people uh, recover from it.